Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Willis, Head of C, UK Director of Procurement. In this unit, I'd like to share with you some of PwC's experiences in engaging with social enterprises. So for those of you who don't know about PwC, we are one of the so-called Big Four professional services firms, a global organisation, and we provide tax and legal, consulting, deals, and assurance advice. In the UK, we have 26,000 clients, around about 2.8 billion pounds worth of revenue, and 20,000 people work for PwC in the UK. Just to provide a bit of context to this unit, I'm going to work through the why. Why does PwC find engaging with social enterprise to be so valuable and aligned to our strategic objectives? Also, how it fits with my personal procurement objectives as Director of Procurement at PwC. And also some of the competitive advantage that we see in association with social enterprise in our supply chain, and it's quite distinctive. I'll then talk a little bit about how we've engaged with social enterprise, and I'd like to finish with some observations around some of the challenges and ongoing to-dos in how we can move forward the social enterprise agenda. Let's talk a little bit about why this is strategically important for PwC. As a professional services firm, our license to operate is largely dictated by our reputation in the marketplace. Whether we act with integrity, how we engage with our community, do we attract the right talent, how can we create social value, and how can we address some of the inclusion and diversity challenges that face us in the world today. And we use our purpose to build trust in society and solve important problems as the lens through which we define our services, our operations, and how we engage with the broader community. Like a lot of organisations, we set out some sustainability impact factors that will help define our business strategy. And these cover things from ensuring fair payment practices, that we're paying the living wage to our people and our suppliers, that we're managing our consumption of scarce resources, taking carbon out of our supply chain, taking plastic out of our supply chain, and engaging in some of the practices around mitigating risks for modern slavery, bribery and corruption. But most importantly, how do we support social mobility as a firm and create a more inclusive and diverse society? And of course, for those of you who are familiar with the tenets of triple bottom line accounting, it really supports our ambition of sustainable, profitable growth. So let's look then at how this supports PwC's supply chain strategy in my role as Director of Procurement. We frame our strategy around three key pillars. The first of which is how can we, through our supply chain operations, enhance our reputation. And certainly at the heart of that needs to be something around being fair, operating with integrity, paying our suppliers on time, and for me personally, positioning PwC as being a customer of choice for our suppliers. And of course there's an element in there of mitigating some of the key supply chain risks, whether it's ensuring that there's zero landfill to waste, managing carbon in our supply chain, and protecting against modern slavery. Important too, of course, is driving commercial value, and that's the same for any procurement organisation. So whether it's achieving savings or cost avoidance, that's a key objective for any procurement organisation. And lastly, we'd like to position ourselves as being relevant for the future. And for me, this is around not necessarily just embracing best practice, but next practice too. And this is where we see some contemporary supply chain sustainability issues such as circular economy and social enterprise being at the forefront. I think there are some very distinctive characteristics of social enterprise suppliers that distinguish themselves from others. Firstly, most social enterprises bring real innovation and creativity and access to diversity that you simply don't see in other parts of the supply chain. They're typically agile, have got a lower cost base, and are very responsive. So you get a high quality service that's focused on you from an organization that really values your business. Of course, too, partnering with social enterprise demonstrates the firm's values and purpose. And I have to say as well, that for most procurement professionals, the social enterprise agenda is incredibly engaging, much more engaging than negotiating contracts, for sure. This is why, for me, it was a natural progression that we should support the Bisocial Corporate Challenge, which is an initiative 
sponsored by the Cabinet Office and Social Enterprise UK to encourage large corporates to spend a billion pounds through their supply chain. We are proud to be one of the founding members. So let's explore now some of the how. So apart from the Biosocial Corporate Challenge, PwC has been supporting social enterprise for a number of years now. We've also established in 2011, in the old fire station at Tooley Street next to our More London office, a social enterprise hub. And in that building we have Brigade, which is a social enterprise that employs people at risk of homelessness and teaches them cooking and waiting skills and places them in hospitality roles once they graduate. We also have the School for Social Entrepreneurs in that hub and PwC's Social Entrepreneurs Club, which has over 250 members, some of which have graduated through to the PwC supply chain. The School for Social Entrepreneurs is also domiciled in the old fire station. So one of our commitments to the Biosocial Corporate Challenge is to raise awareness internally, externally, and to be an advocate for the agenda. So how have we gone about this? Well, first and foremost, we've established a microsite that sits on our external website, and you can see some excellent examples of how we've partnered with social enterprises, and also some of the social and environmental impact that that has had, and some excellent case studies there. We also use our internal communications channels to communicate with our people. And around the building, wherever we've consumed social enterprise goods and services, we tag them so that people can see as they're washing their hands, for example, in their washrooms, that they're using Soap Co Soap, an excellent social enterprise that uses people with visual impairment to produce soap products. One of the tangible ways that we've sought to identify social enterprises to come into PwC supply chain is to convene forums where we have the social enterprises presenting their goods and services to a panel that includes PwC procurement, our internal corporate social responsibility team, some of our tier one suppliers, and partners from the Biosocial Corporate Challenge. A Dragon's Den style environment, if you will. And that's been really helpful, both in terms of raising awareness of the social enterprises to the PwC panel and our suppliers, but also for the social enterprises because we're quite challenging in some of the questions that we ask. And it really helps them properly develop their good or service to be appropriate for a corporate supply chain. So now let's move to some of the learnings from our engagement with social enterprise and some of the challenges that we've faced. I think the first point to make clear is that procurement is not the buyer. We tend not to have a budget. We support others in how we shape the supply chain and run fair and transparent sourcing processes. But we don't buy stuff. And so there is a big onus on us to engage with the people who make those decisions around buying in the business. And sometimes it's difficult to act as the bridge between senior level executive sponsorship for these initiatives. I call this sometimes the donut effect, where you've got high level senior executive sponsorship for initiatives such as the Biosocial Corporate Challenge. And you've got a committed team on the ground, your procurement professionals, your corporate sustainability professionals. But influencing the business decision makers is a challenge sometimes. And that's something that we need to focus on. I think, too, one of our key learnings is that we need to partner with tier one suppliers in our organizations. Now, most supply chains will have a hard core of large suppliers that the majority of goods and services are delivered through. In our example, something like 100 suppliers account for a little over 70% of all of our spend. And so it's important that we engage with them and identify where social enterprises may come into the supply chain. And that sometimes is at tier two, tier three, or even tier four in the supply chain. Important too, to understand what some of the incentives and disincentives are to adoption of social enterprises in your supply chain. Because sometimes even the goodwill of the buying organization doesn't translate to product being procured from social enterprises. So you need to be quite direct and assertive and stipulate in your contracts the use of social enterprises. And of course, one of the things we have to work out is how do we map corporate demand to social enterprise capability? And that's not always easy. I think it's a fact too that at the moment there currently aren't enough large social enterprises to properly gain traction in large corporates. And this needs to be addressed, I think, so that we can really meaningfully ramp the spend that goes through social enterprise. 
one of the things that we need to work on as well is how do we grow our existing social enterprise suppliers without putting them under undue duress? And there's something in there about committing to sufficient forward demand so that they can, with confidence, invest in additional resources and know that they're not going to be left with stranded cost against a spiky pipeline of demand. And that involves some collaboration, sometimes with other partners in the Bisocial Corporate Challenge, so that we can spread our demand and make sure that we can forecast it in a consistent and predictable way to our social enterprise partners, to enable them to grow with confidence. And lastly, we need to properly develop a framework for measuring the social and environmental impact. And that needs to be consistent, it needs to be fair and auditable. So personally, I'm very proud of what PwC has achieved in supporting social enterprise, but I'm conscious that there is a lot more to be done. So that brings us to the end of this unit. Thanks for watching.